<coughs> about um, subharmonics on um, bowed strings. <coughs> I, um, it works with any violin, cello, bass, viola. I <coughs> and in principle, it works on any string, on any note. But sometimes it's not best to use the lowest note to begin. And it may help to hold the bow wrong, like for example, more like this, because it needs much more pressure and slower speed and a very controlled slow speed. And it's sometimes easier, for me, it's easier if I hold the bow wrong. And then you search for this. this Nothing proper, and if you get this uh, 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 regularly and mixed with a normal note, then it's not you get the octave. And I did something else here. I <coughs> I use a finger close to the note I play. Like if I play this note here, I put another finger close there on the string to soften the overtones. It sounds, if I play normal, it sounds like... Actually takes some sound away, sometimes helps. Then you just have to find the right mixture of slow speed and pressure. And also it makes a difference where you use the bow to... Once you find one, you can try to get the next one. And it may sound like it's not an octave. But um, a little smaller interval, and that's because that's because um, I changed the tension a bit through the lot of pressure, but it, it's actually an octave that is mistuned by the change of pressure and by that the change of the tension of the string. start here and go this direction it's the easiest place to find it of course in principle you can you can get it everywhere on the bow but this kind of very strong and hard control of slow speed and too hard pressure is easiest if you hold the bow wrong and press in this part where it's easiest to control it's actually like I I put pressure um, in a direction like a kind of di diagonal that makes the slow speed and the pressure right, something like that. Places where it's hard to get. But I've not done this for years now, and I've not played cello for a long time, so and it's the first uh, take and try. So it's kind of easy if you know. And for me, it also always helps to understand what happens. And it's um, it's like that if you normal note it actually means that there's a. If you make a high speed video and and slow it down, you see a kind of a point going around the string like that, and it goes the long way of the string um, attached to the to the bow hair. The string goes goes with the bow and the long. The little the thing goes up here and comes back down, and when it hits the hair of the bow, that takes the grip of the bow hair. It takes the string from the grip of the bow hair, and the short 
um, bit here, it takes less time, it goes quite fast from here to there. That's when the string quickly um, goes against the direction of the bow. And when the little bend comes here, it puts uh, the string again to the grip of the bow and it goes with the bow again. So that's normal. And of course it goes the other way around if, if I bow the other direction. Um, <clears throat> now if I... Okay, I had to do something else in between. So where was I? Um, there is a little kind of edge running like this on a string when bowed normally and <clears throat> um, if you bow with too much pressure and too slow then the next time this edge comes here and wants to take the a string from the grip of the bow hair. Um, the bow holds too strong and it's not far enough gone to this side to to want to come off and so it will still hold and the um, edge running around will, will by that it will be uh, disturbed and it will soften but it will still run on and on and the next time it comes again here it's quite soft already but then the bow is moved a little further and so still too much pressure but the further further the string is moved out of its middle the uh, easier the string will go off there and so an even weakened uh, um, edge coming coming here will then take the the string from the bow grip and it's kind of possible with the right slow speed and the right pressure to get it that that it goes around twice and only managed to take the um, the string from the bow every second time it normally would so every second time of its normal frequency the bow will make a uh, 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 um, th thing to it so the, the bow will kind of and also the string in this place will vibrate in a way half tempo but the 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 wandering around edge actually plays its own normal note, but that doesn't uh, doesn't change anything because all the notes of a note, um, the, the all the overtones will be also overtones of a subharmonic of that note, and so if you manage to get it um, so slow and exact speed that only every third time this edge comes here will take the hold of the bow away um, and then you'll get the next subharmonic which is of course harder because you have to be kind of very precise and because you also weaken the kind of normal vibration by the by the bow pressure so it's harder, but I try to get one like it's easier, perhaps on a high note. If you want it. Because it always sounds not like an octave, but like a, a seventh or something, because of the higher pressure. If you want to, it to be a real octave, 
though it's in principle an octave that is just out of tune. Um, then you can of course make it one. So what I do is I I put two fingers here and I first press down both and then I press harder and I soften the second finger so that it's not pressing down but only touching the string. something you need to know also to understand when it's uh, um, uh, to subharmonic. So I got distracted again. Um, where was I? Of course, um, sometimes you get totally different notes that don't sound like they could be an interval from the subharmonic series, but they still sound like they jump to a specific tuned point and uh, not just go anywhere and they feel like a subharmonic. And actually there's a way to uh, understand that. They can always be a little out of tune, a little higher m most of the time. But um, they are, if there are something like subharmonics, then they are either subharmonic series of the fundamental of a note. They can also be a subharmonic of an overtone. It sounds a little weird, weird, and I've never tried to willingly create one, but it should be possible. I, what I've tried is to willingly create overtones without touching a point here. Normally, you you play this like. But you can also, it's the opposite of pressing too hard and being too slow, too soft and too fast, you get something like this and you can actually try to create, to find one overtone like this or try to find one. interesting thing about that is you could actually, but it's really hard to, to control and it's different on every instrument and every string. The interesting thing would be to play an overtone and, an, and a fundamental mixed, um, which is in principle possible, and play them like a register, like an organ register. So you can get overtones without um, putting a finger on a point. And this way the string can always play an overtone and so you can also, I try to do it with a finger, you know, it's boring with an octave. You still get different notes because you can uh, get um, an over and uh, a note of the subharmonic series an octave higher than it usually would be. But it's more interesting to use an overtone that produces a different note and try to get a subharmonic on that. But that's a subharmonic.
get what I mean. You can get lots of other notes that seem to be uh, uh, that you might think they, they are not possible and then they could be an overtone without a finger here and, and then a subharmonic of that. It sounds maybe not logic because I press less to get the harmonics and I press more to get the, the subharmonics and also the speed, uh, but um, that is only um, the playing technique to get them willing, and it's hard to get them willing, but um, that they are possible from the strings physics and the bow's physics means that you can get them. Maybe not when if you want, but. Um, that that might help uh, to understand why you sometimes get notes that uh, would seem impossible and and how they could still be subharmonics in principle. So that's all for now. Sorry for my English. I should have um, thought about how to call some things before and. Uh, I tried to play before because I really haven't tried to play them for a long time but I knew that it was kind of easy for me to find them and so I just tried. Okay.